so this is our today's plan so last time we discussed public speaking which is only one mode of communication but that is the major mode of communication if you don't have public speaking in that and if you have only media and other things then you can have some operator doing it you don't need a public speaker so first we covered public speaking today we will cover the remaining media and how to integrate it along with speech so while planning we have to decide what we want to communicate and how we want to communicate before that we have to know how the audience perceives what we say or what we present and what is the best medium for each piece of information which we should use there is no fixed rule that you should only speak or you should only present slides we have to use a proper mixture so that our message gets across whichever is the most efficient medium we have to use that so first we have to know how we perceive so you must have learnt in school that we have five sensory organs there is a sanskrit couplet for that shrotra chakshu sparshanam cha rasanam ghranam eva cha so shrotra means ears chakshu means eyes sparsha means touch that is physical feeling rasanam ghranam eva cha is rasanam is our tongue and ghranam eva cha is nose so these are the five sensory modalities out of which the first three are important for communication the last two we don't consider as communication media like we don't have say a set of sprays and we communicate something with that so the first three media in english they are called bak that is visible audio these you must be knowing what is k k is kinesthetic literally it means sensing of motion so you have various muscles in the body but you also have feedback from all your muscles so like if you stand you know where each of your organs is you don't have to look where my hand is so there is a continuous feedback to the brain and at any moment the brain knows what each portion is doing so in education we consider knowledge and skills what is the difference between knowledge and skills a simple way to look at it is if this is a human being that there is a head and there is the remaining body whatever happens above the neck is knowledge and whatever is below the neck is skill that is your hands and feet and other body there is a rough division normally what happens is we address the first two that is visible and audio and we forget the kinesthetic we don't utilize that for example gestures which we use while speaking belong to kinesthetic but we don't integrate it along with our presentation so we have to consider all three media kinesthetic also means that you have to make people involved once in a while you have to ask them to raise their hand which is kinesthetic or stand up like we did or we clenched our fist took three breaths this is actually kinesthetic just telling you that this should be done for relaxation wouldn't have worked you have to experience it yourself so we have to mix all three media in appropriate proportion so that with the least effort we get our message across so 
So, we will rub this out. So some of this will be in the handout which will be given to you, but not everything will be there. So, you can as well make some short notes. So, in visible media, the most obvious is text and we use this extensively. In fact, first four sessions we spent on this medium that is written language. Plus, whatever cannot be expressed with text. We use graphics. So, even though these might occupy the same space on a page, the brain processes them differently. When the brain knows that the matter is text, it does not actually look for individual letters, it does not even look for individual words. But the eye jumps in steps of say 4 to 5 words and takes them as chunks inside. It does not look for low level graphic form. It looks at them as symbols, not as graphics. So, the way we read text is different from the way we analyze graphics. And you must have heard that one picture is worth a thousand words words. So, that is literally true because if 1000 words makes one document, it might take memory of the order of kilobytes, but a picture will take memory of the order of megabytes, which is 1000 times kilobytes. So, physically there is 1000 times more information <coughs> in the same area of graphics. But it does not mean that the brain is able to process so much. So, just because so many pixels are available, it does not mean that we should fill up the page with complex things. Actually, the brain can process very little amount of information. So, when we use graphics, we have to remember this to keep it as simple as possible and not get tempted by all the modern media which are available. So, in audio, equivalent of this is speech, which we covered in the fifth session. In addition, there are other sounds which we cannot call as speech and of course, music. Last time we saw that music is one way of overcoming our stage fright, because music addresses emotions, but because it does not address our intellect, we do not consider it to be a communication medium. So, you might have seen that many documentaries etcetera have a kind of compulsive musical track behind. What happens is that music distracts you and you lose the on the commentary or on the visuals. So, in audio we mainly consider speech. And in kinesthetic, We have drawing in two dimensions and manual work which can involve three dimensional assembly, sculpture, etcetera. So, if you are showing something with a drawing, the area which processes images in the brain gets activated. With language, it does not get activated, only the language processing gets activated. With drawing, another area gets activated 
and for example, if you are showing some action in your drawing, then there is a motor area which gets activated and the brain unconsciously performs those things. You mentally like when you are watching a game and somebody smashes a ball, you also mentally smash the ball, that is why you enjoy it. So, the drawing should be such that brain will be able to think, it should be able to map it somewhere else and if it is able to use multiple areas of the brain, then they will get linked, your memory will be better and your understanding will be better, that is the purpose of using multiple media. So, you might have heard of MOOCs or EDX etcetera, that is massive open online courses where the courses are online, you sit at your computer or laptop and download the course and hear to the lecture. But in their methodology, after each 5 to 7 minutes, there is a break. During that break, there is some kind of quiz, but this quiz is not your usual A, B, C and select one, but it actually involves you to enter some word, solve some equation, what they call as finger work. Every 5 to 7 minutes, the student who is away has to do finger work. This finger work amounts to kinesthetic, because that keeps you alive and that reinforces what you learnt during the past 5 to 7 minutes. So, now if you are using multiple media, we tend to think that they are additive, that a picture which you use will add something to your understanding. But what happens is the total bandwidth of brain is limited. So, if you are using multiple media, that bandwidth get divided, the pipe is the same. So, part of it goes to speech processing and part of it goes to visual processing. And these two compete, because the brain has to allocate bandwidth to these two. So, unless we balance our presentation, one or the other can dominate, that people can just concentrate on the speech and lose out on the visuals. Or if your visuals are very compelling, they will just look at the pictures and ignore what you are saying. We have to make sure that there is a balance. If this is not done, then instead of supplementing the speech, the visual actually competes with speech and it supplants speech, it can display speech. Even with a balanced presentation, if you have a graphic and you start explaining, part of the attention still goes to the graphic and the attention given to your speech reduces. So, what do you do? What you should do is one of the two things, first strategy is that you increase your loudness, so that the brain pays more attention to you. So, if you are speaking with reference to a graphic or presentation, you should speak loudly, otherwise people will tend to concentrate on the graphic. But this is not very pleasant, if you modulate your voice loudness up and down, there is a limit to which you can increase your loudness. So, second strategy is do not compete, means do not use visual and audio me media simultaneously. So, if you are going to have a graphic which you have to explain, then you first show the graphic and do not talk then people will concentrate on the graphic, they will take it in, they will scan the graphics, try to make out what it is saying. After their inherent understanding is over, then you switch off the graphic and then you talk about that, because now they have a mental image of the graphic. For that the graphic has to be simple, that they can memorize it, 
it should be some simple line drawing or something not a complicated picture. So, first you present visu <coughs> visible image, shut it off <coughs> and then talk or first you explain what the picture is going to be. So, they create a mental picture from the description, then you present the actual visual, then while presenting the actual visual you do not talk because you have already talked, remaining thing they will make out. This way you will be <coughs> able to communicate to the audience without overloading their sensory inputs. There is another effect of visible media which is not mentioned, but it is a well known thing to older generation people that modern video media tend to be like this. You have brightly lit large area facing you and it is above your eye level, you have to look up like this. So, the effect physiological effect of this is if you have to look above your eye level, the eyes get tired. This is the technique which hypnotists use, they keep some object which is just above your eye level and ask you to concentrate on that. What happens is you start losing consciousness and the hypnotist take control, but we do not want to be hypnotists, we want people to understand. So, the second effect of this is that people start feeling sleepy, because the eyes get tired and people cannot concentrate even if they wish to and their attention reduces. So, bright screens should be avoided, extreme case happens when people are already going to feel sleepy. For example, you have a conference running, you have multiple sessions, then you have lunch, you have post lunch session may be at 2 o'clock, 1 to 2 is lunch. You know that after lunch we tend to feel sleepy, because blood is diverted to the digestive system. In olden days people used to take siesta, but we cannot afford it, because we have a 2 o'clock session. So, people are physiologically already feeling sleepy. And if you have a session which has visuals, then most of will will actually fall asleep. So, if you have control over which session you will give in a conference, you try to see that it is not after 2 o'clock. Post lunch to tea time is a dangerous period, because people cannot concentrate. If you do not have control on that and you are allotted such a session, then what do you do? If you know it beforehand, try to avoid using visible media. You concentrate on your speech and deliver only your speech, so people at least would not feel sleepy. So, this B is ruled out. You concentrate on this and use some extra bandwidth in K. So, ask people to do some activity. You take an opinion poll by raising their hands, ask questions and ask somebody to respond make them physically active that is use kinesthetic mode. And once this 2 to 3 slot passes, then people again become alert, then tea is served etcetera, they again become alert. So, that is why this is important depending on when you are delivering your session. And accordingly you should plan, if you are not sure when it will be, then you make plan A and plan B that plan A that you are in good time, plan B that you have 2 o'clock slot, you make alternative arrangement that you will deliver it this way. So, this is we are planning which media to use, we will rub this out. Next is what are the media available to us? So, there are three levels of media, a 
वन इज सिंपल मीडिया और एलिमेंट्री वी कैन से सेकेंड इज इंटरमीडिएट मीडिया एंड थर्ड इज कॉम्प्लेक्स मीडिया सो वॉट आर सिंपल मीडिया दीज आर मीडिया विच हैव बीन एक्जिस्टिंग फॉर प्रॉब्ली थाउजेंड ऑफ इयर्स वन इज म्यूरल्स दैट इज समथिंग रिटर्न ऑन द बॉल एक्सेट्रा सेकेंड इज ब्लैक बोर्ड और व्हाइट बोर्ड third is rolling blackboard which you get in schools etc then in business conferences you must have seen flip chart that is you have an easel you have a big paper sheet people write on that and then they flip it so you can, and you can go backwards in that because it's written on paper in blackboard we can't go backwards then poster banner all these are simple media you don't require any special equipment you don't require a power supply you don't require special skill so simple we'll just write the example is blackboard second is intermediate where you take help of some machinery to project what you are doing but what you do is with still with your hand you are not using programs or any such thing so this is the oldest was you might not have seen was called an epidioscope where you could keep the document could be illuminated and it could be projected this is now out of fashion second is slide projectors you might have seen that you have 35 mm slides you put everything on the slide and then you can advance the slides you can go backwards etc you must have seen ohp that is overhead projector where there is a lamp box with a glass on top and you write on transparency put it there and it is projected but even this is now obsolete so if you can use intermediate media they are simple to operate they will not let you down like your ohp will not get a virus or your slide projector will not stop working you can always manually change the slides so especially in the new place if you are not sure of the equipment and if you haven't tried it out beforehand then try to avoid complex media they can give you trouble at the last moment you just go to the stage try to connect your laptop and it will not recognize it so either you try it everything everything out before or you have a backup plan that if this doesn't work you will be you will still have transparencies and you can still present if nothing works you will be able to write it on blackboard always have a plan b and plan c ready so at the last moment you will panic if you are relying on your media totally then you won't be able to present so always assume that nothing is going to work and be prepared to use the blackboard then you will never fail complex media is approximately speaking computerized media these are the most popular today that you carry your presentation on a thumb drive so it contains all your slides all your text 
all your videos etc then you connect and present so if this works it can be useful but if it doesn't work it is very difficult so even if you prepare all this you be prepared to go back so now when to use speech or text and when to use graphics if something can be explained in language you explain in language and if it can be explained in speech running speech that is the most preferred if it requires some things to be memorized etc then you use text and use handouts so that people don't have to take extensive notes but if there are some things which you can't explain with language alone or in principle you can explain but people won't understand then you use graphics because we have limited time if there are 50 people each minute wasted is 50 man minutes so then you use graphics so graphics we can divide roughly into one is concrete graphics and second is abstract graphics and the most abstract graphic is of course text which we have considered separately so in concrete graphics you are actually showing something that is physical so this might have a live model you can bring the model here and show it if working prototype is not there you can have a dummy and display that this is how the thing is going to look if there is some action to be shown you can actually act it out in front of the audience instead of describing it and of course you can have pictures animation and video clip which is like a movie within picture there are several levels either you can have photograph or you can have color drawing they like the cartoons which you see they are solid color they are just drawn by hand the last is line drawing where the graphic can be made using only a pencil or pen without shading without gray scale this in publishing is called as line art because the method of printing is different for line art and text and photos so even though these might seem compelling like photos now you have million photos available for free and you find photos everywhere in all news items there will be some graphic they will take which your graphic is available many times what the graphic is or what the photograph is also not explained you have to figure out many times that is not even related to the topic it is only remotely related because they found some graphic they put it there 
So, it says visuals for representational purposes only. You must have seen this note. That means you ignore the visual, it has nothing to do with the matter. So, do not use unrelated visuals. In fact, do not use photographs etcetera unless it is absolutely essential. If you want to show somebody's face or something, then only use a photograph. Otherwise, you convert everything to line drawing. Whatever we are telling here, we are actually practicing it. Like when we make manuals, people take the shortcut that when you do this, how the screen will appear? They take a screen dump and print it. What appears on screen does not appear look, uh, does not appear well on a printed page. Printed page has far more resolution and the eye expects that the printed page should have far more resolution. So, if you see in all the computer books where they give lot of screen dumps, the text is unreadable. The background colors are not reproduced because you are in black and white. Uh, you are so, when we use screen dumps, we actually convert each image into a line art. The text we type out again we create the framework and everything else, the text is typed out. If there is a gra graphics in that, we redraw the graphics and make. That way the audience understand better. If you see Apple manuals, we expect Apple to be the media master, that there will be a lot of photographs. But one manual I saw had only one photograph which was the actual screen, how it will look, everything else was line art. So, for technical communication, line drawings is the preferred mode and they need not be complex, they can be hand drawn also. Animation, nowadays animation is available and people tend to think that animation will lead to better understanding. What has been found is, if you are explaining a piece of machinery or something that is not living, you should not use animation. If you are showing how an IC engine works, that the piston goes up, then it goes down, then there is suction, compression. You can see an engine cut out running. So, people will be just attracted to the visual, they would not understand how the engine is running. The children will enjoy it. But if you want them to understand, you only give a sequence of states. Like in a cartoon, published cartoon, there is no movement, there are sequence of steps, in between you imagine what has happened. So, for inanimate objects, do not use animation. You give a sequence of pictures and people will imagine in their brain how the machine is working. But if you are explaining something where human action is involved, you are showing how to open your PC or something, then you might use animation. But there too, instead of just video shot, if you can make animated pictures that is better, which is not practicable. Why is it animation useful there, when some action is being described? So, when you see people doing something, your motor area gets activated and you start doing it mentally. So, if you show something moving, then you perform the action virtually and that is how it gets imprinted in your brain. Then if you want to do the action, it will be easier because you already have a memory trace of that. And this you do not have to consciously memorize, just by looking at the action and doing it virtually, you memorize it. For example, musicians do not think that they are going to play this. 
they don't even have a language for that many of them are illiterate when they activate the song in their brain the fingers know what to do they actually call it finger memory that the fingers know what to do next they don't have to look at the keyboard also so if there are actions being described then you might use animation or a video clip it might help but otherwise for inanimate objects don't use animation it also simplifies life now in abstract media there are many possibilities simplest is table then charts charts and graphs then what we learn as drawing that is machine drawing in your bachelor or they are drawing what they call engineering graphics now <laughs> you may not understand machine drawing so various kinds of graphs then schematic diagram where you are using some kind of symbols for example networks you show nodes and branches circuit diagrams piping diagrams organization charts then time chart where you show various activities and time scale and show with bars that what time period each activity will occupy then you arrange them so that they are sequential and last but not the least one which you may have to use is flow chart nowadays i doubt how many people actually draw flow chart while problem solving but if you draw a flow chart beforehand your solution or program will actually simplify and you might catch many things which you might have missed so we have finished planning and preparation last is performance that what should be the size of the offering here we come back to how we perceive things if we are facing a number of things at the same time if there are two or three things we have no problem when the number of entities starts increasing the brain's attention start getting divided and it has been found that 7 plus minus 2 atoms is the optimum thing for the brain so if you are going to use various points keep it between 5 and 9 ideally 7 don't yeah yeah we would like to end at least on time so professor prakash vaidya has made some single sheet distribution in which he has listed the points related to performance do look at them some of them you may not even imagine and please add to it anything that occurs to you okay uh, i just wanted to intervene to tell you that we'll be soon starting the extensive exercises by vu in which you are required to re, uh, listen to the ted talk so we'll put it up on the web uh, we'll we are actually trying to identify ten or more ted talks and we would like groups of students to look at those 
summarize those after listening to them, summarize those in your own words, and then compare notes sort of. Okay, that will also help you uh, practice uh, correction of the written uh, paragraphs that you write on, on the TED Talk. Uh, we'll we'll, sub, we'll uh, sub, uh, put up a list of all such TED Talks over the weekend and in the next week's lecture I will elaborate the procedure that we'll use uh, for you to look at. But it would be interesting for some of you to just look at the TED Talks as it is. They are all available on YouTube and you would like to listen.